YouTube, what's up, what's happening? Here I am bringing you another video and we're gonna go over once more how to airbrush a t-shirt for beginners. So just off the bat, a few things you're gonna need. Obviously is paint. And I have shown before how many times I like to use Createx paint. And you can see I have all my colors or my spare color up here. I have all these set up in these little bottles. So I'll put a link down below to these bottles if you're new to the channel or if you see this later on and you want to find these bottles, there'll be a link down below. <clears throat> I also recommend bottom feed airbrushes. So here I have four Badger 155 Anthems. Um, the reason I recommend bottom feed with the bottles is because it's really quick to change out colors. So if you really want to go from blue to red, you could flush out the color quickly and easily and move on to red uh, right from the blue. So I have a few colors set up here. Uh, typically when you're airbrushing on shirts, you know, it's really important or useful to have stencils. So, you know, you could have your own different types of stencils. I have videos on how to make stencils. I also sell stencils if you want to visit the website right here. Um, you know, there's different ones different styles, different availabilities. I know there's lots of companies that sell stencils nowadays, but they always help and it's great to have them. So for the stencils, it helps to have some spray adhesive. And this is a Permatex all purpose spray adhesive. I think this is, this is available at Walmart. Uh, I know the Super 77, like the 3M Super 77 stuff works really good too. This has been working pretty good for me. Um, I'd recommend it. You're also gonna need some kind of clothes pins or some kind of pins. Um, it just always helps to have these for multiple reasons, um, but you'll see why I use these in just a sec. So the next thing you're gonna need is some shirt boards. Um, and uh, these are made out of hardboard. That's available at like Hose and uh, Hose. <laughs> it's available at Lowe's or Home Depot. And uh, you know, you get this, it comes in a four by eight sheet. You cut it into your own sizes. A lot of people always ask about the sizes, but really, you know, it just takes, uh, get a shirt, measure the shirt, and make your board, you know, board sizes accordingly. Um, you know, different countries have different size shirts and stuff, so, you know, just go ahead and measure yourself up and get yourself different kinds of boards. Hard board comes in different colors, so you can see this one's like a dark, dark brown originally, and this one's like a light brown, and these have been used repeatedly. Um, they really last you forever because hardboard's like a, kind of hard to break once it's cut. Um, so you're gonna need that, and obviously you're gonna need some t-shirts. So here I have the Gildan. <sighs> the Gildan, 100% um, cotton, pre-shunk cotton. These are probably what works the best. I know 100% cotton always works best. Createx is made in such a way that you can heat press it when you're done and it will lock it into like it will cure it into the fabric so that it won't fade or wash out a lot of people how, how long does it last you know whatever it should last forever if you properly heat press the shirt when you're done i like to do about 350 degrees for about 30 to 45 seconds um and then you know let it cool off and maybe do it again and that really just locks it in and i've had shirts that have lasted me you know five six years wash after wash, use after use. Um, so next thing you're gonna wanna do is just take your shirt and we're gonna put it over a shirt board. So we got our medium sized shirt board here. We got a medium shirt. And the reason you want a shirt board is so that the paint does not seep onto the back side of the shirt. So it works as a barrier between the front and the back side of the shirt. Simple. You set it up, you use clothes pins on the edge of the board to really just lock the shirt in place so it doesn't move. And I am a big fan of just tucking the, tucking the sleeves back so that one, you don't get paint on the sleeves. And it also works as, as its own way of tucking the shirt in place without stretching it. You don't want to really stretch it because then when you take it off the board, uh, whatever you paint will unstretch too and it'll look funky or wonky. 
So you want to make sure that it's on there nicely and tight, but not stretched out. So there you go. From here, we're just going to paint our design and go from there. So once we got our shirt all done, we're going to head on over to the t-shirt press and we're going to give our design here a nice press so that it uh, cures the paint onto the shirt and that way you don't get any fading and then at wash after wash, this design will be good to go. All right guys, so here's my little press <clears throat> and I've showed this press uh, quite a few times. This is the one I have set up at home. I have a couple of Teflon sheets here. I'll put a link to these down in the description as well. Um, I like using these because it just uh, keeps everything kind of stain free and uh, everything just kind of just doesn't stick or anything like that. So we're going to take our shirt, get it off the shirt board. And this press is uh, already preset to heat up to 350 degrees. Uh, Createx I think recommends 325. Uh, but I use 350. It's it's really okay. It's not gonna burn the shirt um, unless you leave it for a long, long time. But all we're gonna do is press our shirt, give it about 45 seconds uh, down like this, and then it'll be ready and good to go. And that's the last step to airbrushing a shirt. From here, you're good to go as long as you have all the steps. You know, you have a press, your airbrush, your paint, and you've done anything correctly. This shirt should last forever. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Later.